Autumn in Karindi Forest. The rainy season has come to an end and everything is still a lush green in this usually dry, deciduous forest. Lemurs only live in the forest of Madagascar. These men are hot on their tracks. They want to get hold of a sifaka, the largest lemur in this forest. A perfect catch. The lemur is measured and weighed and the transmitter is attached to its body. He's male. We know exactly what he's done since birth. That's a benefit of marking these animals individually. We can get very detailed information about them. Peter Kappele is a professor at the German Primate Center of Göttingen University. He has been conducting research into lemurs in Karindi for more than 20 years and runs the primate center's field station in the forest. Eight species of lemur live here, including the extremely rare narrow-striped mongoose. How do lemurs interact with other lemur species? How do they live in their environment? There are still many questions left unanswered about the behavior of the lemurs. But how much time is left to find out more? Both the forest and its inhabitants are endangered. Ten kilometers away, at a fork in the road, the residents of a nearby village sell their produce, mostly corn, some melons. The forest provides them sustenance, even as they slowly contribute to its destruction. The forest was burnt down to plant corn and peanuts, but the soil is already depleted after just a few harvests. It's depressing, as depressing as you can imagine it would be. What's frustrating too is that it's not evil corporations here setting up oil plantations. It's the poor rural population who have to try to make a living somehow. A nearby village, like everywhere in Madagascar, its population is growing. People know that the forest is disappearing. It will be here for another 20 or 30 years, perhaps. What then? We depend on wood, our houses, the furniture. It's all made of wood. If you want to sell something, it's wood. We also cook with wood charcoal. When there's nothing left, people will move on. That's what will happen. The researchers have helped set up a nursery where the first seedlings are being planted. The rapidly growing trees will alleviate pressure on the forest. This is just a drop in the bucket. There are so many children here. And the only hope is that we can raise awareness among them and make sure that they look after the trees, that they develop a sense of responsibility for nature. Otherwise, it won't work. The researchers will continue their efforts. Preserving the Karindi forest is essential. Otherwise, the lemurs have no chance of survival.